All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I've personally invested a lot of money into my gaming battle station. And simply put, gaming is one of my favorite things to do. And so I wanna make it as enjoyable as possible. Uh, to me, it's no different than someone who's a car enthusiast spending a lot of money on their car. But today I'm going to share with you the top five gaming hardware that I actually think makes you better at gaming and gives you a competitive edge. As often we may just be upgrading parts of our setup just for the sake of upgrading. And we often lose sight of actually improving your experience in the process. Hardware definitely matters as it affects your immersion, your awareness, and of course your accuracy. So if you wanna be the best player possible, uh, make sure you're not lacking in this top five. Now, primarily we are going to be talking about first person shooters like PUBG, CSGO and Battlefield 1, seeing as those shooting games are the type of games that people are you know, really competitive at and really wanna get better at. Uh, but there's no reason why you wouldn't upgrade some of these parts just to see a benefit in stuff like MMOs and adventure games as well. And before we get started, I just wanna make it clear that I don't necessarily consider myself a great gamer, but I'd definitely say that upgrading these five pieces of hardware have improved my gaming experience. So in no particular order, but arguably deserving the top rank is a high refresh rate gaming monitor. Simply put, this is the single best investment that you can make towards your gaming setup. With standard monitors only having a refresh rate of 60 hertz, that means that your gaming experience is capped at 60 frames per second or one frame every 16.7 milliseconds. Now, so much can happen in that 16.7 milliseconds when you're not receiving an update uh, to your display, especially in fast paced games like CSGO. Upgrading your monitor to one that can reach up to 100 hertz or even better, 144 hertz will net you a significant improvement right away. And I'd be confident enough to say that your kill death ratio will improve significantly with just this upgrade. With a 144 hertz monitor, given that your system is actually pushing uh, 144 frames per second, you will now be receiving one frame every 6.9 milliseconds uh, to your display. And that's gonna give you a buttery smooth gaming experience. There are monitors today that can reach up to 240 hertz, which is pretty insane, but many say they can't tell the difference at all once you start exceeding roughly 140 frames per second. So try not to fall into the marketing hype uh, and put the extra money towards a 240 hertz monitor because it probably isn't worth it. 120 to 144 hertz seems to be the sweet spot for most people. And by the way, some games are capped well below that 240 hertz cap anyway, uh, so it's not really worth it. PUBG, for example, is capped at 144. Now, I don't actually believe that increasing your resolution will improve your gameplay at all. Most professional players play on a high refresh rate 1080p panel to push as many frames as they possibly can per second, because as you increase your resolution, you won't be able to push as high a frame rate. So if you're investing in a 1440p panel or maybe an ultra wide 1440p panel like the one behind me, make sure you're still investing in a high refresh rate as that's what matters most when it comes to competitive gaming. Next on the list is fairly self-explanatory and that's going to be a solid gaming mouse. I'll include a link to a video that really helped me personally in choosing a perfect gaming mouse, which for me was the Logitech G703. And this is going to be worlds ahead of any basic mouse. First and most importantly is the comfort. Movement on your mouse pad needs to be comfortable and fluid, almost like the mouse is part of your hand and not something that you're just holding onto. Your gaming mouse should feel natural and balanced and after a few weeks of getting used to it, locking onto targets should feel nice and easy. When it comes to a solid mouse for first person shooters, a mouse around 100 grams is going to be preferred by most people with a length to width ratio of two to one. The G703 which I have here is also wireless, which you'll generally want to stay away from, but Logitech's implementation here I've found to be rock solid and offer virtually zero latency compared to when it's plugged in. And in terms of an accurate sensor, the PMW3366 is still king, so make sure that's at the top of your list when you're looking at the spec sheet. And now onto another important addition to the list, and that's a powerful graphics card. We mentioned the importance of a high refresh rate monitor at the start of the video, but to power all of those frames in the first place, we do need a powerful card, as there's no point in investing in a 144 hertz monitor if you're not going to be able to keep up with it in the first place. For those playing esports titles like Overwatch or 
CSGO, you can get away with something like a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti, and there you'll pretty much be able to max out the game at 1080p, but for those playing more demanding titles, you'll want at least a GTX 1060 or a Vega 56 card to play at 1080p above 100 FPS, and even then you will have to lower some of those graphic settings. This is definitely where you'll want to invest the most money for your gaming PC, as if you're playing on a GTX 1050, but your friend is playing on a GTX 1080 Ti, who's your opponent, with all other things being equal, they have the clear advantage. Or in other words, if you're playing at 60 FPS and they're playing at 120 FPS, it's clear to see who has the advantage now. CPU choice is of course important for gaming as well, but so long as you're not being bottlenecked by it, your focus should be on upgrading your GPU, and you can learn more about that in the top right hand corner. And if you are playing online, it is absolutely crucial that you have a strong internet connection. You could be playing on the most beast system in the world with a Titan V and a 240 hertz display, but if your ping to the server is too damn high, you could be beaten by someone quite easily who is playing on a complete potato. So obviously an ethernet connection is the best solution here and it's what's going to be ideal but most of us have our setup away from an ethernet port or a wall, so a wireless adapter is going to be our only option. If you can get your hands on a motherboard with an integrated Wi-Fi solution, that's going to be your best option from my experience, but for those going with a USB solution, do not cheap out as that $5 USB Wi-Fi dongle from eBay is not going to give you the performance that you're after. Uh, try and at least invest in something with USB 3.0 and something with 802.11 AC. And lastly, I feel that a solid pair of headphones is absolutely critical. Again, you could be playing on the best setup possible, but without an accurate sounding, powerful set of headphones, you're going to be oblivious to the enemy's position. Now, I'm not too fussed here. Whether you're playing on closed back or open back headphones, or maybe even a pair of in-ear monitors, the big tip here is that you need something that's going to bring you accurate sound stage and representation of sounds while you're gaming. Now, when it comes to soundstage, open back headphones are objectively better than closed back headphones as they are able to represent sound outside of the headphone, whereas closed back headphones sort of encapsulate the sound and it sort of sounds like it's coming from inside of your head. And what this means is that if you hear someone creeping up on you, you're able to pinpoint their exact direction and uh, their proximity as well. Whereas with a closed back solution, that may be a little bit more difficult. However, the benefits of immersion and awareness that you get from an open back headphone could easily be offset from the ambient noise in your environment or setup as the sound from an open back headphone not only is allowed to travel out, but also goes in as well. So this means that any surrounding noise that's you know, around you could be very distracting. So if your setup is like mine and in your living room, you may also wanna keep a set of in-ear monitors or closed back headphones close by, as outside noise could not only be impacting the sound in game, but can also be quite distracting. Comfort is a big topic as well. You want something that feels like it's floating on your head and not necessarily clamping or itching you. So you don't wanna be distracted in game and you just wanna chuck those headphones on and forget that they're even there and let them do their job. And so if I was upgrading my gaming setup from the ground up, these are the top five pieces of hardware that I'd be focusing on the most. And if I could pick just one of them from this top five list, it would definitely be a high refresh rate monitor. And if you truly wanna get better at competitive shooters, then playing on a 100 Hertz or 144 Hertz panel is going to pay off enormously compared to a standard 60 hertz display. And so let me know what you would put in your top five list, guys. Uh, let me know down below, would you change a couple things or maybe you even disagree with a couple of the things that I added in. Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to toss a like, uh, it definitely helps out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one.